So yeah, I'm finally caught up with House of the Dragon, and the first episode that I review, my heart is already broken. <laughs> And welcome to my safe game and everybody. Thank you guys so much for clicking on another video and joining me here on the Black Gay Comic Geek channel. If this is your first time checking out one of my videos or checking out my channel, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Michael. I call myself the Black Gay Comic Geek and I always say the things that I love to talk about on my channel has blood, sex, gore, and magic or any variation of the forest. I like to talk superheroes, video games, comic books, all things fantasy, all things sci-fi, all things black, all things queer, or sometimes the lack thereof in sci-fi fantasy but if that's something that you're interested in if you like my videos you like the content if you like the reviews you like my personality do me a favor hit that subscribe button help me to grow my channel but also you can help me grow my channel by hitting the like button it'll help with the youtube algorithm getting this video out there getting my channel out there so i can continue to grow and hit 9,000 subscribers i'm like 400 subscribers away so let's hit another milestone on the channel with that said guys i have finally caught up on House of the Dragon, I had a couple of people during my interview with the Vampire Lives ask me like, Michael, why aren't you talking about House of the Dragon? Because I wasn't watching House of the Dragon, but now I'm finally caught up. This is the first episode. And I was also debating whether I wanted to start my reviews because I'm like, well, the show has already started. If I start reviewing, I'll be kind of late. But I was like, you know what? Screw it. Interview with the Vampire is over, so give me something else to talk about. And so with that, this episode is called The Red Dragon and the Gold. And uh, um, the red dragon, Melis, Melis, Rainis, uh, you killed two of my favorite. Granted, Melis, I don't really care about the dragon. I mean, even though I do care about the dragon, but because it's Rainis's dragon, but you killed like one of my favorite, if not my favorite character, which actually, I should have said this, but if you couldn't tell from the title of the video, there's gonna be spoilers in this video. I'm talking full spoilers, but yeah, they killed. They killed Rhaenys, like one of my, if not my favorite character of the show. She was like the only adult in the room. The queen that should have been. The queen that never was. Like she should have been queen. If she was queen, we wouldn't be dealing with any of this in the first place. Like they even kind of alluded in the beginning that she was the more qualified person to rule all of Westeros. Rule the Seven Kingdoms. But you know, sexism. Sexism is the downfall of this world. Which ironically enough, happens to be the thing in real life as well. But I'm just saying, man, if anybody deserved to die in this episode, it is Krispy Kreme Christian Cole. Like everything that this man does ends up falling by the wayside, ends up backfiring significantly, whether it's him sending off the twin or one of the twins to go take out Renera and then both of the twins ended up unaliving each other only because he was caught with his pants down, literally doing things that he shouldn't have been doing with having sex with Allison. And the thing that I find ironic and most hypocritical about uh, Crispin, Crispy Cole, Crispy Cream, is he's upset about Renera for not wanting to marry him and not wanting to shack up with him, being the love of his life, and essentially relegating him to being her whore because she still wanted to sleep with him. She still wanted to be with him, but yet he didn't want to do that. But now he's perfectly fine, essentially being Allison's whore. Like, where did you upset? Like, where's your line, bro? But I will say like his plan did work. And at least in this instance, yes, it caused a lot of collateral damage and it ended up possibly causing the injury or the death. I don't think he's dead, but the death or injury of Aemon and his dragon Sunfire. But, his plan to take out a dragon worked because now we lost Melis and we lost Rhaenys, two very strategic and two very important characters for the war for Rhaenyra. Because once she saw Vhagar show up, she knew it was over because that's the biggest dragon that either side has. And I always find it funny how like, Vhagar is so menacing, but yeah, every time it flies, you nothing but holes all throughout his wings. I'm just like, how is this dragon even flying? Like this dragon needs to go to an old folks home because it needs to retire. Like it's holy. Like it's, it, it looks like, you know how sometimes when you look at people's windows and they're like uh, curtains, not their curtains, but their window shades are like all broken and cracked and you're like, 
it's time for y'all to replace that, replace them window shades. That's what Vagar reminds me. It's like, it's time to replace that dragon, bro. Cause that dragon's not long for this world. But Allison, she's clearly having buyer's remorse. She's clearly regretting or realizing that her conviction that Viserys changed his mind at the end and named their son Aegon as the king, she's starting to realize and see that, oh shit, I think I might've been wrong. He's probably talking about Aegon the Conqueror because of the confrontation that she had with Rhaenyra in last week's episode. She's going back and look at the histories and reading more and she's, and then she's also seeing Aegon for who he is. And, she, and I'm glad she actually confronted him. She's like, do you really think wearing this crown gives you any semblance of wisdom? Like, She's realizing he's not fit to be king. He's just a petulant child. He's basically a mediocre white man. And I'm glad she kind of called him out on it. She's really the only one that could call him out as his mother. But of course it didn't work. That just emboldened Aegon even more and caused him to cause more damage and to himself and the battlefield to the point that he almost died. And part of that was because Aemon kind of betrayed him. Like, And I don't blame Aemon because again, this man is not fit to be king. This man is not fit to rule. Aemon is the more strategic and the more ruthless and the more, cause he, he kind of studied under Damon. He is basically Damon 2.0. Like honestly, if you told me those were Damon's kids and not Viserys' kids, I would totally believe you because they act more like Damon. But Aemon calling out Aegon in High Valerian in front of the council. And even though they themselves can't speak it, they still felt the tension. And especially once you realize that Aegon can't really speak it that well. Like he spoke it as like a person I said like first year Spanish which also kind of more so solidifies, at least to me in, a in Aemon's mind, that Damon isn't fit to be king. And this is also his way of getting revenge against what happened to him last week when they busted in on him at the brothel with the woman that he doesn't sleep with, but just cuddles with. Which also, part of me is like, was that really his uh, swang wang when we saw it last week? Or was that like a prosthetic? Now, Allison, the fact that she got pregnant with Sir Kristen Cole's child, like granted, I don't like Sir Kristen Cole. I'm like, I want him to die. I want him to die bloody. But because he's so hated, he's going to live for a long time. Like even think of like Joffrey in Game of Thrones, the original series. Joffrey lasted for about four seasons until he finally got God. Look at how long Cersei lasted. Granted, even though I, I, I just, I love Cersei though. I can't even say I despise Cersei. Like Cersei was a villain, but she was a villain that I love, but she lasted for a long time. But going back to what I was saying, I'm like, to be fair though, Sir Kristen Cole, he's kind of hot. Like I hate him, but he's hot. Like, especially after he got the haircut, I was just like, oh, wait a minute, hey. Hey, Sir Christus, so I'd probably be pregnant by him too. So like, I'm not gonna lie. Like the man is fine. He still needs to die, but I'd be giving it up too. But I don't know how Rhaenyra is gonna win this war. Like she's losing things on all sides. She's losing allies with the unintentional, un unintentional unaliving of uh, what's her face's son, the, the little boy, the blood and cheese event with them taking out the wrong prince, the little boy, I can't think of the girl's name, but the woman that's kind of like a psychic, she actually reminds me of like Drusilla from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, for those of you that are Buffy fans. But she also lost a dragon and a child with the unaliving of her son Jace and his dragon. And now she lost one of her most loyal and strategic and the sm one of the smartest people in her court with the loss of Rhaenys and her dragon, Maelys. And we also don't know, Damon's walking a little strange right now with this whole vision quest that he's going on. Like, it can go one of two ways, obviously. Like, he could come out of this confronting his past, confronting himself, and then realizing and accepting Rhaenyra as the true ruler of the seven kingdoms to sit on the iron throne, finally respecting her authority. Or he could come out of this and be like, no, this is what I always wanted. And she's the only thing in the way. I've always wanted to be the king. I was originally supposed to be the king had my brother not named her out of spite. So I'm going to end up betraying her. So I don't know. All I know is I don't trust Damon at this point. And for the most part, he's never really given me a reason to trust him. But I do find it ironic that he went to Heron Hall and is purposely not eating and drinking for fear of them poisoning him. But then he drinks this random potion from this random woman that he never saw or met before, just out the blue. And technically, she's the one that did poison him. Not literally, but 
she basically gave him this random potion. But yeah, this episode just goes to show why seeing Pokemon in real life wouldn't be cute. There is no Nurse Joy that you could take them to at the end of the battle. We just watched three Charizards taking each other out. And I was horrified. I'm like, cancel Pokemon at this point. <laughs> because this is what, like all these dragons are suffering and ended up, cause I know, I don't, I never read the book Fire and Blood, but I know that this battle between uh, Rhaenyra and Aegon, is what helped cause a lot of the dragons to end up becoming extinct. And we basically just watch dragons fighting each other because humans conflict. These dragons would just be minding their business more than likely if it wasn't for these stupid humans. And this also goes to show why you don't really use nuclear weapons, why nuclear warfare is unacceptable because that's essentially what dragons are. But because when you use nukes, Nobody really wins at the end of the day because there's too much collateral damage. There's too much death and destruction. You can't be the ruler of the seven kingdoms when there's no kingdom to rule. It's all been burned to ash. But yeah, I'm enjoying House of the Dragon so far. Like I said before, with regards to Interview with the Vampire, I'm not enjoying this show as much as I was Interview with the Vampire, but I'm still thoroughly enjoying it. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got for episode four of Interview with the Vampire. If this video does well, I'll do other episodes. But with that, what did you think about House of the Dragon episode four, the red dragon and the gold? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if this is one of your first time checking out one of my videos, please check out the other videos on my channel. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends, families, and neighbors about my channel to help me continue to grow. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.